so what I'm doing here is simultaneously recording um, through the camera and my Tascam so that I can get good audio and you know in case this turns into a podcast um, I waited a little bit. I'm sitting out here at the public library in Asheboro. There's got to be a better way to hold this thing right, but it's just going to have to do this way now. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, uh, yesterday I went to um, Bicentennial Park in Asheboro and uh, sat there for a little while. It's a, it's a little awkward um, trying to do a video or, or record sound or anything there because so it was really busy. It was nice yesterday. And uh, there were a lot of kids out there skateboarding and people walking their dogs and people walking. And uh, so, yeah, it was, it was a little awkward. What I'm trying to do is get out of my comfort zone. Um, you know, maybe some of you saw that I posted a video a while back that this was my 50th year. Shit, uh, it is, it's, it's going to take me a little while to get used to doing this. Um, you know, if you're going to record in public, you can't hide from the world, I guess. And um, I've got to get used to maybe people wondering what the hell I'm doing. But uh, I said at the beginning of the year that this was kind of a monumental year for me. I turned 50 in May. And... Um, I want to get out of my comfort zone and do things that I've always wanted to do. I enjoy doing a lot of things, a lot of artistic things. Um, I like photography, videography, sewing, crafting, drawing, um, just cooking, all kinds of stuff like that. But my biggest deal this year, I think, is that I want to do more podcasts and more videos out in public. Um, I, I like the little town that we moved to, um, Asheboro. I, I find it to be interesting, and um, I've started a series, just really at the very beginning stages, started a st series um, on my Instagram called Asheboro Uncensored. And that just means that I want to go out and adventure out um, in Asheboro and just kind of show everybody the places the good the bad and the ugly as I said in my um, description of my that series on Instagram but um that's a big deal for me a lot of people might think that that's not you know like so what but I'm an introvert and I get to be more of an introvert the older I get it's really hard for me to come out of my shell and uh, I think that I need to just, you know, stop dipping my toe in the water and just dive in. So that's what I'm going to do here. That's how I'm starting this. And um, part of that means also doing more with my podcast. I, I, uh, the one that I started a couple years ago called A Widow's Diary. And I kind of felt like I had to stay pretty linear with that subject, but I'm starting to realize that that um, I'm a widow, and whatever subject is on my mind at the time is part of my diary, I guess. Um, so yeah, I want to do more with that. For me, it's gotten worse, and I've realized that lately. I've become more introverted. I've become uh, more cynical. I've I become more just I just distrust the world and I'm bitter and angry and unfulfilled and I don't want to be that way I you know Julian my husband was my light he was our light he was an absolutely wonderful man and if you hear any different they were jealous and he had this just brightness to him and and almost sometimes this really innocent um, naivete. He was very, you know, he saw the world differently, I think, than a lot of us do. A lot of us ha are very cynical and very distrusting, but Julian gave everybody a chance. He gave everybody a chance to prove that they were better than what others thought of them. 
and that's one thing he did with me that really changed my life. He he made me the, a better person, the person that I could be. And, you know, when his light got snuffed out in that car accident, it took away my light. And I have, you know, one of my friends on Facebook, I posted the other day that my, you know, I was so afraid of filming in public and, and, and doing these things, but I actually really enjoy it. I absolutely enjoy photography, videography, um, creating. I just, I just love it. It's in my blood. You know, my, my birth father and his sister who adopted me and I, a lot of the, the, my family are very talented artists. Um, my birth father in, in another universe I'd be very proud of him, but he's a shithead, so, you know, he, but he's a very talented artist, and I've noticed that a lot of my artwork has gravitated towards more of the stuff he did. He used to paint signs and make vinyl decals and things like that, and, you know, he had the gigantic plotter back in the 80s and 90s, and, and I never understood what those things were till I got a cricket, and I realized I've just got the cheap commercial version of it, but, um... You know, I I have the right to express my talent and to use it. And um, I think the other thing that made it so heavy this year is turning 50 and feeling less worthy because sometimes people do tend, do tend to discount you as you get older. I think young people need to be more, more aware of how they talk to older folks. Um, I've had young people say things to me that were condescending, like as if at my age I don't have the right to continue to grow and and develop my, you know, to find my happiness, I guess. And one thing, my daughter and I, we're very close, she's 21. Um, I think her and I being so close is the reason that she sees it different than a lot of other girls her age. And, you know, she'll tell me, Mama, you're, you're not, it's not over. You're, you know, it, you act like you're 80. She told me the other day, she said, get up and do the things that you want to do and stop being afraid. And sometimes we tend to get angry at people who just lay it out flat like that. You know, they don't sugarcoat it. They don't try to skirt around it. They just come out and say it. And it, you know, it did make me angry for a minute because I was like, I can't just do that. And, you know, she's she doesn't back down. She's my kid. So she's like, why not? Why? What's stopping you? Why, why are you not doing the things that you want to do? There is nothing and nobody in your way. You, you know, I had to... I had to let go of a lot of people who kind of were stepping on my back and keeping me from getting up and moving on. And my adoptive parents are two of those people there. It's really extremely sad because my adoptive mother is very talented, very, very artistic. But she always kind of looked at it as being kind of a sin. And so she never really did much with her art you know she would get so far and then she would not go any further let's just put it that way but um you know to her and my adoptive father have always said really mean things to me and my siblings about you know they have a really old-fashioned belief in work uh, mama it's a contrast with them too because uh, mama was uh, she's a you know, she's a religious nut, and Daddy was an alcoholic. And if you tell her Daddy was an alcoholic, she loses her shit. But he never went to church with us. He cussed. He cheated on her. He was—he just a horrible person. So is she. And you know, they always. She used to always tell me that um, work was work, and if you enjoyed what you did, if it was fun, it was a sin. And I shit you not, those are, that is exactly how she put it. 
She said, "You God did not mean for us to enjoy work on this earth. We are meant to work and labor and then die and enjoy paradise. We don't know what's after this. I'm just going to put that one out there. You know, that's that's an unfair way to raise your children in, in such a way, in my opinion. In my opinion, let me put it that way. Um, it's really unfair not to give children a chance to grow. Um, you know, emotionally, artistically, just to let them be who they are meant to be. And I was always pushed and prodded to, especially after I had children, to become a nurse. And, you know, it was a, a path that I went down. I um, actually completed a CNA 1 and CNA 2 class back in 1999. And then I was enrolled in the RN program, but I was pregnant. <laughs> I got pregnant um, while I was taking the CNA class with my last child, and um, I dropped out. And I think some part of me was really happy with that because it's never, it was never really what I wanted to do. It was what somebody else told me I should do. You know, my parents were about con accumulating wealth and not enjoying it and it's you know in a way it's really sad because all of their savings went into um, mama's cancer treatment over the last seven or eight years and it still doesn't it still didn't do them any good she's still gonna die I mean she's almost 80 so you know but they never enjoyed anything I don't think as when I was growing up in that household, we never enjoyed anything. We didn't, you know, we didn't do the things other families did. We didn't get, go on huge family vacations. We didn't um, get a swimming pool. We didn't get a VCR. We, we didn't have things like that. But my daddy had the gigantic satellite that played porn on all the channels, you know, by the time I was 17 or 18. And he always had a brand new truck, but Mama drove an old raggedy car till she was older and finally, you know, convinced him to get her a new car. But it, it just, it seems like they, they were such boring people too. There was no, nothing exciting happening. And I really feel like I want those adventures in life. Even if to other people, my adventures may not seem like adventures to them. I want to do things that are outside of my comfort zone, things that I was told were sinful growing up, like enjoying myself and making videos and creating artistic content and doing things like that, you know? And it's going to be a hard, hard road because <laughs> I have to change a lot of things about how I feel and what was in indoctrined into me as a child. So. You know, it's it's not going to be easy, but it's probably going to be fun for y'all to watch. <laughs> um, just like sitting here, and I've consistently recorded. I haven't turned my recorder off in 15 minutes. Um, and there's traffic coming all around me. There's people parking around me. But you know, it is what it is, and I, I've got to I've got to learn to stop caring so much. I think some recent events, and I, I won't, you know, if you know me, you know what I'm talking about. Um, getting kind of slammed on the internet for something I was accused of doing that I didn't really do wrong. Um, it kind of toughened me up. It's, it's, you know, forging metal. That's what it is. I've compared to that before that... Um, it was an, a, a, an analogy that I had seen somewhere years ago, and it made me think of that. You know, to, in order to make metal tougher, you have to fire it and soften it and beat it with a hammer. And, you know, you do that process a couple of times, and it gets tougher every time. So... That, that's kind of how I'm looking at it. I'm, I'm forged metal, you know. You, you set me on fire and you beat me with a sledgehammer, but now I'm coming back stronger. This world doesn't just belong to one person. 
this world isn't one person's playground to treat others however they want to treat them. And that's the other thing that I'm just really fucking sick of. I'm sick of people acting like it is okay to be complete and utter dicks to other people. And just because you have a huge social media following, you think that you're right. And, you know, you, you can do whatever. But that's not the case. It's really not. You, you just, you know, those of us who have been put in the fire and forged with a sledgehammer need to come back stronger and show that we are not going to be done in. Uh, one thing that happened with all that freaking fiasco was that people were making fun of the fact that I had 375 followers on TikTok and the person who was um, slander, uh, libeling, slandering, whatever, talking shit. Let's just say talking shit. That's the official name for it now. Um, she had 90,000 followers. And first of all, if you're basing your popularity on your TikTok following, okay, good luck with that. Second of all, it is not quantity, it's quality. And I said through that whole thing that happened that the people who were on my side, I, I really respected and appreciated them for being the decent human beings that they were. Most all of them did not go after this person or her followers and call names. They tried to reason. But it's kind of like, you know, it, it, you can't reason with a group of people who are just there for a fight anyway. They've already made up their mind that they're going to fight this out. They're going to hurt feelings. They're going to call names. You cannot reason with people like that. But it's the quality. And my 375 people, <laughs> which it wasn't on TikTok, though. It ended up going to, um, actually, to Facebook. Um, but the people who followed me are good people. And that's one thing I told this other person that she and I messaged back and forth. And I said... You know, I said, um, you think you've got um, an army behind you, but you've got an army of clowns. And I have an army of, a small army of people who actually can reason and think and talk like adults. And I will never regret that I have never bought followers or gain followers through false pretenses or any of that it has always been organic i always laugh whenever i get messages from companies that want me to pay them to give me followers i won't do it because i want you to come to my page to my channel to my whatever and be there because you genuinely want to be there not because you know you were driven there by some false pretenses or whatever, but, you know, it's really hard to explain that to people who, who base their popularity on a bunch of dumbasses, dingleberries as I call them, following them around and saying, yeah, whatever. It reminded me of the little toddlers on the playground, you know. You got the little group of bullies and they'll put their hands on their hips and they'll threaten to beat you up and say, well, you're stupid. And it just... But anyway, <laughs> I veered off a little bit. I'm sorry. Um, I think my, my, my point originated, started with me wanting to say that this is my year. I want to do things that I've not done before. I want to be braver than I've ever been before. Because, you know, Julian's not coming back. My cheerleader is gone. He did leave me a beautiful daughter who... You know, she's just like him. She has, she's so loving and kind to me, and I don't want to get started on that too much because I'll start crying. But, <laughs> I mean, if it hadn't been for that kid, I would have checked out a long time ago because it's been really hard. I lost my soulmate, my twin flame, the other half of me. I, I lost him forever. And it's really hard to accept that, but... Whether I accept it or not, I want this 
to be my time. I want to be able to do the things that I've always been afraid of doing. And if you don't like me, get the fuck off of my page because I don't need your negativity. Um, you know, people think they know you because they think you're quote unquote an open book online. And there's a lot of things that I do not post, that I do not talk about. It's embarrassing, it's awkward, it's, it's sad, it's tragic. There's a lot of things going on. I have a lot going on. But I'm going to try to work around that because I deserve to accomplish some things that I've always wanted to accomplish. And I'm going to work on that. Anyway, let's see where this, this takes us. Stay tuned. But if you're interested um, in seeing Ashboro and, you know, just kind of venturing out with me, I will be trying to venture out and do more things here in Ashboro. I, I find Ashboro to be a very lovely little town. I, I We moved here in 2015 um, because my daughter wanted to move somewhere where there's a little bit more happening, but not too much. You know, we're still a little country. This is also, if you're interested, an interesting fact, though, Ashboro is the home of the world's largest geographical zoo. It doesn't mean we have the most animals. It means we have the most acreage for our zoo, and they're actually expanding. We have an Africa and North America exhibit right now, but they are building on, and I think it's Asia and Australia. And the plan from what I heard when I worked there several years back was that they wanted to expand it to um, have, I think there were going to be up to nine continents. I could be wrong about that, but um, anyway, yeah, and hopefully soon we'll be able to get to the zoo and I'll show you guys and I can introduce you to a couple of the people I worked with. Little Miss Katie, she's working there full time now and maybe she'll... Maybe she'll let me interview her or something. So we'll see. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to do things I've, I've never done before. And y'all get to watch me grow, hopefully. This chunky little lady's got things to do. Peace, y'all. Love y'all. Bye-bye.